Hi, everyone. My name is Zalad Zemak, and I'm a software developer at Viva Systems in Toronto, Canada. Viva provides cloud-based products for the global life sciences industry, and I currently work there as the lead UI developer for the Safety AI product. Today, we'll be talking about Fiber, React's newest reconciliation algorithm that was introduced in React 16. We'll talk about what React had before Fiber, why Fiber was necessary, and some of the things we can achieve with Fiber. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started. I'll start with a quick demo here. And as you can see, I have a pretty simple app that has an input field. And whatever I type into the input field is then being rendered. Um, uh, we have like 80 elements uh, in a list that's being rendered with the value that we typed into the field. So if I type in a lot, we're going to get 80 elements with a text a lot. So um, my slow list uh, is a component that's being rendered. And if I go into it, we can see that essentially returns us an array of 80 elements of the list item component, which is a component that waits for three milliseconds and then returns an LI element with the uh, children prop, which is essentially the text that we passed. And the reason that I'm waiting here for three milliseconds is just to simulate um, a component that's heavy, that takes a long time to render because it's very complex. Now. If I um, type something into the um, input field, so um, let's say I'm going to type um, React Conference, typing, and stop typing now. And then I can see the value in the input field and in the list. So I'll do that again, React Conference, stop typing now, and then I see it. So. I hope that you noticed that lag uh, that, that I had. It was like about a second or two between the moment I finished typing React Conference into the input field and the moment I saw the value um, being populated um, in the input field itself and being rendered on the list. And that's because when I typed in the value, I had another component, the MySolList component uh, that rendered um, as I was typing it. And I'm sure that like most of you at least um, have seen this type of issue um, happening um, in your application where you have like a laggy input field because there is another complex heavy component that needs to be rendered uh, based on the value that you have in the input field or something similar to that. So let's take a look at our app uh, just to like understand why this is happening. Uh, and we're going to look at it uh, in the form of a tree connecting all the components and see what's happening. So the stack reconciler is the implementation powering React 15 and earlier. I won't go too much into details about how this algorithm works because we are here to talk about the fiber algorithm. But what's important to know is that, for example, if the state of app has changed, React will traverse this component tree recursively, asking each component on the way, what are you rendering to based on that state change? Then, uh, based on the result of the render um, function, it would create a virtual DOM and update a DOM um, with that result. So this reconciliation algorithm is a purely recursive algorithm. An update results in the entire subtree being re-rendered immediately. While this works well, it has some limitations. You can see here that the input element uh, in the blue um, one, and, and that's the one where fast response is important to us. We want the user to see what he or she types right as he or she types it. However, since the typing updates the state of the entire app component, everything renders, including that red slow list. And that's why everything seems so laggy. So what is really wrong with the stack reconciler? I'll have a quote here from Andrew Clark, who's one of the team members of the React Core team at Facebook. Uh, in UI, it's not necessary for every update to be applied immediately. In fact, doing so can be wasteful, causing frames to drop and degrading the user experience. Now, with the old reconciliation algorithm, we couldn't break the work into incremental units. If React was going to walk the entire tree of components synchronously and perform work for each component, it may run over 16 milliseconds available, available for an application code to execute its logic. Now, what do we mean uh, when we refer to 16 milliseconds, and why is this a problem with the recursive approach? Well, typically, for a video to feel smooth and instantaneous to the human eye, the video needs to play at a rate of about 30 uh, frames per second. Anything higher than that will give uh, an even better experience. And this is actually one of the prime reasons why gamers prefer a higher frame rate for um, first-person shooter games when, um, where precision is very important. So having said that, though, most devices these days refer to their um, screens at 60 frames per second. Or in other words, with 60 frames per second, a new frame is displayed every 16 milliseconds. This number is very important because 
if, re if the React render takes more than 16 milliseconds to render something on the screen, the browser will drop that frame and the user would get a laggy experience, similar to um, what we saw earlier. I don't know if you've ever seen a video um, that was created um, using uh, 12 FPS or 10 FPS or 20 FPS, but it's like not as smooth as 30 and definitely not as 60 FPS. Another thing that's important to note is that JavaScript is a single threaded language. And because JavaScript code is executed in one thread, only one line of JavaScript can be uh, run at any given time. The same thread is also responsible for other document lifecycles like layout and paint. And this means that whenever JavaScript code runs, the browser is blocked from doing anything else. If React is going to walk the entire tree of components synchronously and perform uh, work for each component, uh, like we said, it may run over that 16 uh, millisecond that's um, available. Uh, and because browsers, browsers only have those 16 milliseconds to do all the work uh, in order to run at 60 FPS, um, reacting um, to each of those events can completely block your JavaScript application um, when, we meet, when we fail to meet that 16 millisecond budget. Um, that's essentially when we see the content uh, of your web application jotters on the screen. Uh, it's often referred to as jank, um, again, what we saw in our demo. And of course, it negatively impacts the user um, experience. Now you might think, why not make, make React faster? Well, the problem in the demo uh, that we saw, for example, was that an update such as the user uh, input is stuck behind larger updates, such as the complex component tree um, that was that slow list. Um, that's user code. It's not part of React itself. So with everything I explained so far, we can formulate two problems that we have to solve in order to get um, to more responsive user interfaces. First one is that um, long running tasks um, cause frame drops and we need to make sure all of our tasks are small and can be completed within um, a couple of milliseconds so that we can run them within one frame. And then the second one is that different tasks have different priorities. So let's introduce um, concurrent mode. Um, it is experimental and it's a set of new features that help React apps stay responsive and gracefully adjust to the user's device capabilities and network speed. So because it is um, experimental, things may change. It's not recommended to be used in production just yet, um, except for at Facebook, where it is being used in production. Um, and if you want more details, I would highly recommend checking out the official React docs. Now, we just noted that JavaScript is single-threaded. So how can it possibly be concurrent? Well, it's mostly about conceptual threads, or in more accurate terms, cooperative scheduling or cooperative concurrency. Um, essentially, what all these fa fancy terms mean is that once a thread is given control, it continues to run until it, it explicitly yields control or it blocks. So what does it mean? Let's take version control systems as an example. Before version control systems, as you can see on the right, if we wanted to uh, work on a feature, um, you had to make sure nobody else was touching the files you were touching. You had to let everyone know you were working on these files. Essentially, you were blocking everyone else from making changes to these files since you were working on them. And this can be thought of as um, a synchronous process. When version control systems came along, you would just create a feature branch, do your work, and then merge back. Uh, and this can be thought of as an asynchronous process. So, React Fiber essentially eliminates the need to process updates in a synchronous recursive way. Uh, instead, it enables React to take advantage of scheduling and prioritization, and that enables us to pause work and resume it later, uh, to assign different priorities to different types of work, and reuse previously computed work or throw it away if it is no longer needed. So for example, in our demo, React could keep the input field responsive to the user, meaning the user would see what he or she was typing right away, since it would have a higher priority than the list of elements that needed to be rendered. Then when the user doesn't do anything, meaning doesn't block the main thread, React can render and display the, um, the, that list of elements. So that sounds cool, right? Well, let's see it in action. 